Hi there everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie Marie here on Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on FlossTube and I am here with another video. Can you believe it? It's only been like, I don't know, 48 hours since my last one went up. Um, today, I was inspired by Aish from Sticky Stitch. She posted a super lengthy but super exciting video this morning, or at least I saw it this morning, um, an update on her knitting because she's not stitching right now. Um, and it sort of dawned on me that I haven't updated you all on my knitting in ages, and I am still knitting. Um, that hasn't really ceased. It's slowed down considerably, but it hasn't ceased yet. And um, I'm not really sure why I didn't update you. I think it's because I got so far behind on updating that I have a lot to update you on, and I didn't want to tack that on to my already long cross-stitch updates. So I am making a separate video today purely knitting. Um, and so if you don't like knitting, then you can just turn off now because that's all I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about knitting. Um, so I have some finishes and I have a lot of works in progress. And I have um, some yarns that I have acquired over the last several months. Um, I don't have all of them to show you today, but just sort of the ones that are most exciting to me and sort of my plans for them. So I have piles of yarn things everywhere. Right here are my finishes. Right here is my basket of my works in progress as well as the yarns related. Over here I have the yarns left over from my finishes as well as the yarns that I want to show you that I just purchased. So there's just yarn everywhere. Um, so I'm just gonna get started because this could take a little while. And um, so yeah, let's let's talk about yarn stuff. So we'll start with my finishes. And the first finish I have to show you is the most complete. And you'll understand what I mean by that in a minute. Um, so what I have here is giant orange chunky cables. It's all done. How cool is that? So you will remember, you may remember, um, I talked about this back in August. And um, I was knitting it flat. And now it's seamed up into a tube, and that's exactly what happened. Um, I can find it because my seaming, as it turns out, is terrible. So you can tell right there is where I seamed. It, it went really poorly for about there, and then I figured out that I was doing it backwards. And so I, the rest of it doesn't look bad. But right right in here, it's, it's off. But that's okay. And then um, picked up stitches, learned how to do that to knit the ribbed bit here. The reason that you do that is because um, you tighten it up a little bit so that if you wear it over your shoulders it sits there. And I'm gonna put it on um, because people like to see how things look when they're on, I guess. So it is a great big cowl if I want to wear it like that. It's really squishy and um, warm. Or I can Let's see if I can do this quickly ish. There we go. Or I can wear it like a capelet so that it's wrapped around my shoulders and sort of giving me like a squishy hug. So that is my Shaw Hill. Um, this was designed by Alicia Plummer and um, I knit it out of Malabrigo Chunky in the glazed carrots colorway. And I had purchased four skeins and it took me two and a half to knit this. So I still have a full skein and then um, a partial skein left. So here is the full skein that I have left over. And then the partial skein, I don't know where I put it, but uh, it's somewhere. So I have to weigh it to know exactly how much yarn I used, just out of curiosity's sake. You know, I'm a numbers girl. So, um, yeah. So there is Shaw Hill. All done. The next two are finishes, but they're not all the way finished. Um, the first one I'm really embarrassed to have here to show you. Um, and you have seen this in my last knitting update in August. And it is the baby blanket that I was knitting for a coworker. So there it is. And the knitting is all complete. Everything, as far as knitting is concerned, is done. I've woven in all of the ends. I washed and blocked it. I actually had to do something really scary with this and I put it in the washer. 
um, just to make sure that it would hold up to being in the washer. And it did, it did just fine. Um, so there is that. So I told you that she was having the baby at the end of September. It is now middle of December and I still have this blanket in my possession. Well, I was, I added in these holes so that I could string the ribbon through and make, um, add some pink. The hot pink uh, ribbon that I could find was too thick to go through the holes so I ended up buying just like a soft baby pink. And I can't believe this, but I don't have enough ribbon to get through the ends, to get through to complete it. So there's a tiny little tail here and a longer tail, but not enough to get across the length of this blanket. I'm so bummed. And I'm having a really, really hard time finding a ribbon that's long enough. Um, so I'm not quite sure what to do. I thought about buying another um, ball of ribbon and then doing half in one ball and then half in the other and doing it like that. But I haven't done that yet. Um, Fortunately, the gift recipient is totally okay. You know, she's not she's not harping on me about not having it done yet, um, which she should be because then I might be faster at finishing and fixing it. But um, nevertheless, um, it's kind of cool because I have an opportunity to show you the finished piece, and it is still so warm and squishy. I love this thing. It's just phenomenal. I can't wait to give it to the baby. She's three months old now, almost three months old, and uh, she's a big girl. She's a big baby. She's going to love it. But um, so there is, there's the baby blanket, and I hope to never show this to you again. No offense. So that is that, and then I had purchased, I think, six skeins of the, oh, wait, let me talk about a couple of things. Um, that is the Smooth Sailing. The designer is Tannis Lavely. And I knit that out of Spud and Chloe sweater in the toast colorway. And so I bought six skeins of the yarn to do that. And I knew I had too much. Um, and I had too much by... Let's see. Here is the partial skein in a mess. Partial skein. And then I have two whole skeins left of this yarn. So I have quite a bit left, so I can, I'm going to try to figure out something that I can do with the rest of this, because I love this yarn. It's so good and squ squishy, and um, the labels are so adorable. That's Spud and Chloe. And um, it's great yarn to work with, and you can wash it in the washer, so um, I'm really excited that I have a whole bunch left over, because then I can figure out something to do with it. The skein and a half of chunky yarn is going to be a little bit harder to figure out, but I'll figure something out. So there is that. The other finish that I have is super exciting, and I can't believe that it's not all the way finished, but I know why. And it is my eggnog sweater. So here it is all done. The knitting is complete. I have sleeves finished sleeves and the body is complete so we're all done here um, I have not and this is why it's not done I haven't woven in the ends yet because this took up 10 balls of yarn and so I have just that many ends to weave in it's just they're they're everywhere and I it's my least favorite part of the knitting process is weaving in ends I just I just don't enjoy knit weaving in ends um, but it needs to be done, and then I have to wash and block it, and then wear it. Mm, I think I might do that today. I might weave in those ends today and then get it blocking, it's because I imagine it's going to take a while. So this is the eggnog pattern. Um, the designer is Thea Coleman. Um, she's also known as Baby Cocktails. And I knit this out of um, Knit Pick Swish Worsted in the Dove Heather colorway. So nice soft gray. Kind of some variation to it, but not a whole lot. Um, there is a couple of things that I changed that um, they weren't like intentional changes. It was just... So I, I finished the body and I was so excited because I had just like two inches of sleeve to do and then the whole thing was complete. Well, I didn't have needles of the right size. 
So I fudged it and did it with needles of the wrong side, of the wrong size. And so you can tell where the switch is. It, it's fluffier here and then it thins out. But because I did it on both sides, it almost looks like a, like a design characteristic. And so I'm okay with it. I don't mind at all. And um, I tried to tighten up the stitches here at the very edge where you can tell that I changed needle sizes. Um, but there's only so much I can do because I think I went from a 10 to a 7. So that's okay. Not a big deal. Like I said, um, it looks like it looks like a design characteristic. Um, I do have to work on picking up sleeves, picking up stitches for sleeves because I've got these great big holes and I think that I can use this yarn left over from the tail to tighten that up. But um, yeah, that's something. Oh, and on this one, the particularly large hole, my stitch holder my waist yarn that my sleeves were sitting on f slid out and so I had to pick up stitches in a really funky way that I'm amazed truly that I was able to get to work. But that's okay. Um, it fits great, at least right now. I haven't blocked it yet so I imagine it'll fit better. Um, I'm not going to try it on because um, it's too much to try to finagle and organize on my shoulders and whatnot. But once I get it blocked and washed and whatnot, I will um, try it on and take a picture so that you guys can see how it looks on. It's phenomenal. I love this sweater so much. And my first knit, hand knit sweater is done. And it's still so squishy. Aish, I'm so glad that I'm not the only one that does that. <laughs> okay. So there's my hand knit sweater. And, um... I had bought, I had purchased 14 balls of that yarn um, because they were in 50 grams gains. And so I have a partial and three full skeins left. So quite a bit left. Um, this I am going to make into a couple of hats, um, a couple of different style hats because I love gray, um, especially during the winter time. So I will definitely get use out of this. So that's that. So those are all of my finishes. Um, the last time we spoke I had a couple of works in progress that I haven't touched. Um, and that includes the Out of Darkness by Boo Knits. Um, that's the blue one with the beading. That's a shawl. I haven't worked on it at all. Um, and then I also had the five hour baby sweater. And that I ripped out. Um, I didn't like the construction of it and um, my boss sort of told me that he didn't want it. So that's fine. That's cool. I'm all right with that. Um, so I ripped it out, and I will repurpose that yarn for something else. So let's talk about works in progress. I'm just going to start with from the top here and work my way down, because that's the easiest way that I can think of doing it. Um, it's not in any chronological order or anything. It's just it is what it is. So I was working on my final paper for the semester, and you guys are going to laugh at this. And I got distracted because I felt the need to knit something. And so I knit a fingerless mitt. And this is a really, really quick, really pretty, simple, simple pattern. And I'm going to try it on for you so that you can see it. Obviously, I've got ends just everywhere. So there's a pretty lace detail here on the cuff that comes down to the wrist. Let's see if I can spread that out so that you can see it. And then that is knit flat and then seamed up, and then you pick up stitches again, just like the um, just like Shaw Hill, and then knit the hand. And so I am going to have to tighten this up because it's a little bit loosey-goosey there at the top. Um, but that's okay because I've got my yarn end. And then I have yet to finish the thumb. Um, but I have it here on waist yarn that's been knotted so that it's not coming out. And this is the Can Trip Mitt. And the designer is Melanie Burke. And this is knit out of some of my favorite yarn I've ever used. Um, and it is, 
we'll take that off. It is the Plucky Knitter, and um, this is one of my favorite hand dyers. Um, I am a part of their Classics Club shipment, and so every other month we get a skein of yarn. Um, or you sign up for what base you want and how many skeins you want, so you can spend thousands of dollars. Um, their yarns are pretty pricey, and so I signed up for a single skein of their Primo Fingering base. Um, so it's a fingering weight base. And it is 75% merino, 20% cashmere, and 5% nylon. And so sometimes people use this to make socks. I will never use this to make socks because it's got the cashmere in it, and I just, that makes me nervous. Um, so this is the, let's see. This is the July Classics, um, and it is the, um, the colorway is called Old Lace. So it's this, it's really hard to catch the color, but it's this, I mean, it's, it's Old Lace. So, you know, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like gray with like a Victorian rose kind of hint to it. It's lovely. It's just, it's one of my favorite colors that they've ever put out. And there's the bottom of the ball. Um, it's coming up pretty true to color here on the camera. So I used that to knit the hand, obviously. And then I also used Plucky Knitter Primo Fingering Classic. Oops, sorry about that. Um, and this was the September colorway. I'm saying this wrong. Whatever, you guys don't care when it came out. Um, and this is Manderley. And this is... A deep, deep foresty green variation. It's not going to show up very well on the camera. I've got <laughs> Thor hair everywhere. Um, it's never going to pick up right on the camera, but um, it's also a very gorgeous colorway, and the inspiration for this was um, um, Rebecca, one of my favorite books. So there is that. And so together... I use them to make my cantrip mitt. So there's that. And so obviously I only have one. I have the second one to do, and I have the thumb to finish up. Oh, um, one thing I wanted to talk about was I knit this on double pointed needles. And so essentially they are short needles, and you work with four of them, three or four of them, and then you use one to do the actual knitting. Um, and it's a technique for knitting in the round, usually smaller projects. Um, and I have to work on my double pointed needle knitting because you can tell where the needles were because it gets a little bit loose in those stitches. Let me see if I can. I know that this one on the on there is worse. So you see where you can see the bars between the stitches there. That's where the the two needles were. So I have to work on, on knitting on double points, and I'm okay with that. It's a, it's a technique that I want to learn. So there's my cantrip mitt, and I will have to get to work on the next one. But I haven't worked on this in a long time, so it's really kind of an old work in progress. So that's that. Okay. Next is some gift knitting. And this is for my nieces. My sister has three daughters. And so I am knitting them all a scarfette, just a little scarf, um, in their favorite color. And let's see if I can organize my notes here. So this is the Paula's scarfette. The designer is Georgie Halam. And it's just a really simple little scarf. Quick, quick knit. I knit this in probably a few hours. I'm a slow knitter, so, you know, as such as. And there's just a little cable detail interspersed throughout the um, scarf. And then at one end of the scarf, you make a hole so that you can slide part of the scarf through it. And I think that's really cute. So this one is for the youngest. And I am knitting these out of um, Knit Pick Swish Worsted. And this is, uh, 
color is this? Sugar Plum. This is Sugar Plum. So just a pale purple. The youngest, my sister said that her favorite color is any color. <laughs> so purple. We'll go with purple. Um, and then for her sisters, um, they like rainbows and pinks. And so I went with two different color pinks for them. And so this one is Rouge. Hot pink. Nice hot pink. And then this one is Conch for conch shell. Just a, like a peachy pink color. So they're the same, but they're all different, which I think is kind of cool. Um, and these girls are twins. Um, so it works out nicely that they're the same, but they're a little bit different. Because that's that's just how they are. So working on those. Um, they're quick knits, so I should be able to get them done in time for Christmas. Um, and yeah. So those are the Paula's Scarfettes. And then I also have for my sister I am making um, it's called cinder and this is designed by Jared flood and this is going to be um it's going to be an infinity scarf I think no I lied I'm just making this into a regular scarf because my sister likes to wear things how she likes them and this is where I'm at with it Aisha, I'm sure you love this, <laughs> just because of the green. It's a fantastic green. Um, and so there's lots of cabling. Oh, sorry. i got to get all my stuff organized here. So there's a cable. Let me see. There's a cable on both sides. And then eight rows later, there's a cable in the middle here. So really interesting construction. I really like it. Um, it's complicated cables, but I'm really enjoying it. Um, Ashley told me that her favorite color was lime green. This is not lime green. It's The colorway is avocado, um, so I hope that she likes it. She may not, but we'll see. Um, and that is knit out of um, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Bulky, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. So there it is in the skein. Big, squishy, soft. I really love it. If she doesn't like it, I'll wear it because I happen to like wearing that kind of color green. Um, and she's pretty opinionated and she'll tell me if she likes it or not. So, so that's that. And that's also going to be a pretty quick knit because it's chunky weight yarn. Um, so I can get that done in time for Christmas as well. So the next thing that I have is huge and the reason that it's huge is because well just because of the nature of the thing it is a blanket for my mom so my mom informed me that she doesn't really like cross stitch and that kind of makes me a little sad but um such it is and uh so I, I said, well, you know, I learned to knit. What would you want? She said, you know, I really like a blanket. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Crazy lady. So I asked her what color, and she said, I'd really like like an off-white, a white or an off-white, because it would go nicely with her black leather couch and the decor in her, in her living room. And I'm like, are you serious? You want an off-white blanket. She has two dogs and a great big yard that gets muddy when it rains. Okay, lady, whatever you, you know, whatever you want. So I started knitting this. And so it is, it looks mighty similar to the to the baby blanket. And that's just because it's got the yarn overs and whatnot. And this is called the Hourglass Throw by Jared Flood. And I am knitting it out of um, Madeline Tosh, um, Tosh Vintage in the antler colorway. So it's this soft, off-white, creamy, squishy deliciousness. Um, Tosh Vintage is 100% Superwash Merino. It's a worsted weight yarn. And it's so much fun to work with. I love this yarn so much. Um, I have made the decision to alternate balls of yarn, so that's why I have two skeins of yarn here and there's little cables, so I've got my cable needle there. Um, it's a lot of fun to work on, but it's 
tedious because it's so huge. The pattern repeats I haven't been able to memorize, so it takes me a while, and it's a 32 row pattern repeat. And so each pattern, much like the baby blanket is from there to there, and you make these little hourglasses, little hourglass shapes. And I think she's going to love it. You know, I'm sure that she will. It is a labor of love, and it is an expensive, expensive blanket. I spent too much money on this yarn. Um, but it's worth it, you know, it's for my mom. So there is that. And I just, I love working with this yarn. I want all of the skeins in the world of Tosh Vintage. It's just a joy to work with. So, so there's that. And that is my big work in progress that will not be done in time for Christmas. Um, maybe her birthday in April. We'll see about that. Okay. Let's see. What have we got next here? This one is one of my favorite new starts. And I just started this because I was waiting for yarn to come in to start working on the girls' things. Um, and I had this sitting in my stash. And this is some just fun yarn. So this is going to be the Sala Cowl. And it is designed by Bristol Ivy. And it's got the big holes in it for a reason. It's big and um, it's really thick, knitted up, but it looks thin. And so this is kind of a cool construction as well because I'm using two different needle sizes, as you can see there. So these are US, this one is a US size 10 and this one is a US size 5. And um, this is a paid for pattern so I can't talk much about it. But it's really cool construction. It's an, oh wait no, this is a free pattern. Yeah, this is a free pattern on Knitty, um, and I'll be sure to link it. Um, so you knit one side with the ten and one side with the five, and you get this interesting effect where the knit stitches they sit together differently than they do normally. So I don't, I really, I really love it. I um, mean, it's knit on the bias and then seamed up together. So I'm really excited to see what happens. It's a really great pattern for highly variegated yarn, which this obviously is. Speaking of the yarn, this is uh, Blue Moon Fiber Arts Socks That Rock Lightweight. And the colorway is kind of hard to find. It is Nom de Plume, which I kind of love. Um, so it's got reds and blues and greens and this pea green yellow color and purples and like all of the colors and I just I love how it's knitting up really enjoying this um, I've had to put it down in lieu of Christmas knitting but once Christmas knitting is done I will be sure to pick this back up and I'm really excited about it um, Aish this is a cowl design I highly suggest you check it out because you would love this one you don't cast on very many <laughs> which I know you love so there is there's that. And I only have one skein of this, but this is a, a less than a one skein project, so that is that. Oh, what else? Okay, um, one more. This is the... This is my least favorite project. I don't work on it very often, um, and I'll explain why. This is the foolproof. So, this is a cool construction as well. You only cast on three stitches. Ish. It's got your name on it. There's no garter tab. Um, and you knit down and then off to the side and you get to make these cool stripes. So I am knitting this out of, um, this is the Loopy U Solid Series, and I am knitting it in their maroon and orange colorways, which are the Virginia Tech school colors, um, and I had intended on getting this done for football season. Uh, college football season is basically over. We have a bowl game at the end of December, but um, I didn't get it done in time, and the reason is because I don't like working on it. Um, it is 100% superwash merino, but it's not soft. It's 
kind of scratchy. It's not. It doesn't feel nice. Um, and I'm not really sure why this feels so different than the other 100% Superwash Merinos that I've used. It's a fingering weight yarn, and I love the colors. I mean, you know, it's a really solid, really good orange and a really good maroon. They look nice together. Although, knitting up, they look more vintage than I had anticipated. In the skein, they look pretty vibrant, but in the knitting, they look pretty vintage. Not really sure how that happens. The other strange thing is that the orange, they're both fingering weights. They're the exact same yarn. Except the orange is knitting up a lot thicker than the maroon is. And so there's an obvious difference between the stripes in the squish factor which is important. But I'm going to keep with it. I'm going to finish it, and I'll probably wear it because I do love the orange and maroon, you know. And this is cool. It's a cowl that you can really, really customize really easily um, by changing the stripes, by changing the length, um, by changing the width of it. It's really, really customizable. I highly recommend this pattern. And... It's just, it's really cool. I just wish that I had picked different yarn to do it in. But such is this. And so I have um, two skeins of each color to accomplish this. So, it's going to be a lengthy work in progress as well, which is alright. So that's all of the knitting projects I know. It's quite a bit, isn't it? I have currently five works in progress and several that I want to cast on, but I'm not going to do that until I get this winter, or this Christmas knitting completed. Um, so let me move on to some of my recent purchases. Uh, let's see. First of all, this isn't really a purchase. This was the October um, Classics for the Plucky Knitter. This color is never going to show up on camera. It is gorgeous, let me just tell you. It's just beautiful. It's the only time that I really wish that I had, like... I wish that my plucky subscription was 10 skeins of each base that they offered it in because this this colorway is stunning and I'm not the only one who thinks so. It's a highly in demand colorway. It's really hard to come across in a D sash. Um, and I imagine it will stay that way. So this is yeah, that is so not the right color. It is so much more green than that. Ooh, that's pretty close. It's it's a vibrant, loud green colorway. It's stunning. It's just, it's so, so pretty. I'm so obsessed with it that I can't figure out what to do with it because I want it to be gorgeous um, and to really show off the color. The colorway is Move Over Darling. Um, and again, it's 385 yards of a 7525 merino cashmere nylon blend and I just love it gorgeous 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 I'm gonna try to insert the um, the picture that plucky knitter has used to show off this colorway um, because they've done it in a light box with um, properly diffused light so that you can get an accurate idea of what the color looks like because that's just not it it's just not it so anyway so there's move over darling Next, um, Eat Sleep Knit has recently um, started stocking Cascade yarns, um, both the Super Superwash 220 and the Superwash 220 paints, um, which are worsted weight yarns. And so I have purchased a whole bunch of those. So I have, let's see, this is Red Wine Heather. And this is, let's see if I can find the color number, or the color name rather. Nope, can't find the name. Okay, well it's a bright orange, so, <laughs> maroon and orange guys. Are you sensing a theme with my knitting? This is going to become a stocking for next year. I'm going to knit a stocking. Then I have... See, this is a pale purple color. 
and that is coordinating with this is a 220 paints and this is a variegated purple they don't put the color names on the tags that makes me sad they put color numbers but not the names so anyway and this is going to become a gelato giraffe which is a pattern for a stuffed animal um, and the stuffed animal is a giraffe um, and I would like to knit this for my newest niece um, I'm not gonna get it done in time for Christmas but um, her birthday's in May so I will knit that for her birthday and I'm sure she'll love it and it's um, Cascade 220 which is hand washable and all of that good stuff so that's that then uh, this isn't really a purchase either um, the loopy you if you spend a certain amount of money you join the loopy groupies and um, when you join the loopy groupies they send you a skein of yarn and this is what they sent me this is a gorgeous gorgeous um, skein this is Lorna's laces hand dyed and it is their shepherd sock which is a, an 80-20 superwash merino nylon base um, and the colorway is summer serenity how pretty is that and this is um, 430 yards which is great for um, a pair of socks so I'm gonna find some cool socks for variegated yarns and I just love this color love it love it love it this blue in here is very close to move over dialing actually where did my move over down? There she is. Oh, no. You can see that move over darling is a little bit greener there. Anyway, so, so there's Summer Serenity. Then I bought two different skeins of yarn of very similar colors, um, which I didn't realize I'd done. This is uh, the Fiber Company's Road to China Silk and Jewels. Um, and it's a soft gray bluey color um, and it is called blue tourmaline this is 65 percent baby alpaca 10 percent cashmere 10 percent camel 15 percent silk quite an interesting combination which adds up to just soft super 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 soft and it smells good um, this is 150 yards of a fingering weight and this is going to become a hat um, that it's called the Hermione Hearts Ron hat um, and it's a Harry Potter based hat it's a cute sweet little hat so that's that and then the yarn that looks very similar to that which is also going to be for a hat is Spud and Chloe and this is their outer base which is 65% wool, 35% organic cotton. Also very squishy. And this color is... What color are you? Oh, uh, Bayou. And also, you know, very similar. Gray-blue, kind of a tint of green to it. Gorgeous. Also going to become a hat. This is a bulky weight yarn and so it's going to be, um, it requires more yardage. Um, this is going to become the shroom hat, um, which Eat Sleep Nip advertised and I just fell in love with it and immediately ordered <laughs> the yarn I needed to make it. So that's what that's for. And then last but not least, I have some more Madeline Tosh. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this before. This is Madeline Tosh Tosh Marina Light in the Sequoia colorway. And it's coming up much paler or lighter than it really is. It's like a really nice deep red color. Um, and this is one skein, but wound it in two balls because my winder is tiny. And so that is that. It's got hints of hints of of uh, blacks and grays and it's a fingering weight yarn and I was going to make a, um, a Stephen West Pagona which is a shawl but I think I might purpose this for something else I don't know what 
because I love Tosh Marina Light. So, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll figure something out. So that is that. So that is, that is everything. I have some more yarn on the way, but I'm going to save that for my next knitting update. I think I am going to do these knitting updates separate because then you have a choice of whether you want to watch them or not. Um, hopefully this is the longest update I will ever put up because I hope to start doing these more regularly, but we'll see what happens there. Um, so yeah, uh, I just want to say thank you for watching. I will put all of the relevant information in the down bar as well as scrolling across here so that you can um, find any information that you're looking for. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.